Welcome back to ZNT2 Sample Hypothesis Testing. In the previous videos, we were focusing on the independent samples, and now we're going to take a slightly different tack into the paired samples land. Future videos, we're going to talk about things like non-parametric versions, proportions, effect sizes, and powers. But for now, let's go ahead and just recap what we've talked about with the Zs and Ts. So we early started with the one sample version where we were comparing the means and proportions between two groups, but those two groups were specifically identified as the sample and the population from which the sample came from. So that's where we get the name for the one sample test. In the two sample tests, we're comparing the difference between two groups where these groups are actually separate bodies. Each one has its own population. And in the independent samples, we wanted to see if those two groups were different from each other because they're two different entities. Paired samples takes a slightly different twist. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the two paired two sample hypothesis testing. And in the paired sample, what we're saying here is that we have the same sort of group and it's being measured twice. And so because it's the same group, there's certain characteristics about that group that make it a little bit different. So for the other, from an independent sample version, first of all, we, it needs fewer resources, fewer people, and it's more powerful, meaning on um, these that we're eliminating individual differences because it's the same person or same group or item that's had something happen to it more than once. So we, we can reduce the amount of variability we might expect. So another thing that we're doing with this is the idea that these pairs are correlated to each other. Think about it this way. If you go ahead and at the beginning of the term, start and take a, a pre-knowledge check exam, and at the end of a semester, you take a post-knowledge check exam, you're the same person that took the exam before and after, and there's going to be certain characteristics about you that are going to be the same. What other classes you're taking, background knowledge you've had coming into the course, estimated amounts of learning, there's all sorts of things that can go into it that says these are unique to you and they're not going to change as much between the pre and the post, so we're, we can eliminate some of the variation, which makes this test more powerful for finding results. Now, instead of comparing Z's I'm sorry, instead of comparing two samples on one independent variable, such as looking at men and women and how much time they spend on social media each week, we could look at it as one sample that's kind of getting compared on two variables. That's where that two sample, two variable stuff is still kicking in. So instead of looking at men and women separately, we could look at men and women together and then see how was their social media use per week before we had some sort of treatment and how's their social media use looking after we have some sort of treatment. And so the assuming is that there's no difference from the independent samples, except when it comes to calculating the denominator of your T-ratio and the degrees of freedom. So let's go ahead and start with some of the assumptions that the distribution of these are normal, that your samples are dependent. Before they're independent, you would say that two, two sample groups aren't influencing each other. Here we're saying that's okay, and it's expected. Paired samples have a identify itself as sort of a pre and a post, and so there is a dependency between them. And that the observations between this group, though, are independent. And the hypothesis is that your null is going to be equal to no difference, and your alternative is going to say that there's some difference that's not zero. If we look underneath at the math machine, on the left I'm showing you your independent sample t-test, which we just talked about in the previous videos. And in the paired sample, the numerator is the same. We're still doing a difference between the groups, but the denominator changes. And the denominator, it's still a standard error of a difference, but how we calculate it is a bit different because of how we're dealing with these pair groups. And our degrees of freedom revert back to how it was with the one sample version. So the degrees of freedom are n minus 1, where in the two sample versions, n of group 1 plus n group 2 minus 2. Note, we really only have that one group in the paired sample test, which is why we use the n minus 1. If we want to go ahead and calculate this out by hand, I've made a small table on the left where we have three different students, and they've taken a pretest and a post test, and these are the scores for them. And then I have a column for the differences between those, and I've made another column for differences squared that's going to help us figure out how we get our values by hand. So I start working on the standard error of the difference in the numerator. I take values out of my table that I have there. So d squared that's going to be my 101, the D is my 17, and I go through the math and I figure out the standard error of the difference is 
646, and I had a T-score of 17, which we could go ahead and have worked through to obtain, but I'm, that's just that difference between them, the difference between these pre-tests and post-test. And if you take 17, divide it by 2.646, you get a T-score obtained of 6.425, and our degrees of freedom of N minus one is two. So I go ahead and identify all this out. I can verify my results in R with my T-test. And in the T-test, here's where we're using sort of like the initial version in the independent samples with the comma, because I've got two separate vectors of data, pre, comma, post, pooled equals false, because we are not in the independent samples version where we are pooling our standard data together. Now I'm flipping it where paired equals true to tell R that I'm doing a paired sample test. And these are the results I get. I get a T-score of negative 6.4, which is very much like what I would expect degrees of freedom of equal to two, and a p-value of this at 0.023 rounded. Now note, my t-statistic is a negative 6.4, and that's because we have a lower value in the pre subtracting from a higher value of the post. Had they been flipped for whichever particular reason, we'd have a positive t-score, but the relationship holds. I get my 95% confidence interval and a mean group difference in the groups between them all of which might be useful. Now, just to kind of recap how we do these independent and paired sample tests as far as we deal with an R. In R, with we have one independent DV and one grouping IV, so we separate them by a tilde. X can only have two subgroups or, two, or a subset that has two subgroups, and Y has to be a vector of data for both groups. They're separated by a tilde. In the two separate vectors method, we're separating x and y by a comma, so we've got t dot test, x comma y, or y comma x, where each x and y is a separate vector of data referring to one of the groups that are being compared. They're separated by a comma, not a tilde, and the order doesn't matter which one we put into the t-test first. And with that, that's going to wrap up our talk on the introduction of paired sample testing, and I'll see you all in the next video.